Hello and welcome, PML fans, to your PML DC. That means PML Draft Center. I am your host, Admin Joe, along with Morgan. What's up, guys? Pretty good. All right, guys, we're just going over real quick. This is the PML Singles Draft Class of 2020. We got the Toronto Tyranitars, Charlotte B Drills, Berlin Bisharps, uh, the Iowa State Jirachi Clones, Baytown Boomers, Sedona Score Bunnies, Detroit Guardies, Day Day Knights, New York Indies, Melbourne Manectric, Townsville Crocodile, Mannheimer Machamps, Atlanta Arcaniners, The Blades, uh, the New England Tartriots, and the Magic Harpies. And we're going to go ahead and introduce the Week 1 Power Rankings. So, All right, at none. I'll go ahead. So to explain the power rankings, this is how we're doing it. Uh, obviously, it's week one, so most people have one win. So we broke it down to uh, whoever had the best uh, differential. And then if the differential tied up again, we went to the team whose single Pokemon had the most kills in the game. So go ahead and take off with number one, Morgan. All right, the first game was the Mannheimer Machamps versus the Draw Clones. So that was Ha Run versus um, Michael Bloom. Um, the Machamps brought Extra Drill, which got zero kills, zero deaths. Haxorus, one kill, zero deaths, and he Dynamaxed. Rabombi got one kill, one death. Flareon, zero kills, zero deaths. Mantine, zero kills, zero deaths. Bell Awesome, four kills, zero deaths. And Michael brought. Rodom Wash, one kill, one death. Dub Wool, zero kills, one death. Pseudo Wudo, zero kills, one death, and he Dynamaxed. Scrafty, zero kills, one death. Crustle, zero kills, one death. And Appleton, zero kills, one death. So Man Manheimer Champs pulled that one out, and uh, it looks like they made pretty quick work of them. So Blossom had four kills, so that would have been the MVP team. On his team. Yeah, I'm surprised Bill Awesome got as many kills as it did. Yeah, I wish we could watch the video on that because I don't know how the hell that happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if I, if I had to take a guess, it quiver danced and got a boost. Yeah. Well, good for you, Ha Run. Well done. <laughs> All right, now we're going to go ahead and move on to the Townsville Crocodiles versus the Charlotte's B Drills. Uh, highly anticipated matchup, especially since B Drill said they were going to win this one. With all their videos and whatnot. Hey, he has by far the best promotion out of anybody <laughs> in this group, though. He really does. He took more effort than I did. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start off with the Townsville Crocodiles. They've won a 5-0 agreement to Timer. He had all six Pokemon left, and Charlotte Beedrills had two Pokemon left at the Timer. Uh, they agreed that... Uh, the Charlotte Beedrills could have potentially killed one of his mons. So they agreed to a 5-0 timer win to the Townsville Crocodiles. And uh, the Townsville Crocodiles used Conkelder, 1 kill, 0 death. Vaporeon with 3 kill, 0 death. Jolteon, Cottony, Frostmoth, and Dusclops just showed up just to have fun and cheer their teammates on the sideline because they did not see the battlefield, at least according to their kills and deaths. Then uh, the Charlotte B drills they brought in Chuckle with zero kills, one death. Gyarados, no kills, no deaths. That was one of the remaining Pokemon. Mamoswine was also one of the remaining Pokemon with zero kills, zero deaths. Malamar, zero kills, one death. Gavantula, zero kills, one death. Cursula, zero kills, one death. All right. Nice. That was Jaden, wasn't it? Jaden played him? Yeah, Jaden took him on. So Jaden's the <clears throat> returning champion. Yes, uh, he he's sitting pretty at number two, only because the Bell Awesome put in so much work for the Mannheimer Machamps. Nice, nice. All right, game three. Uh, that's your game, so I'm gonna read your stats, and then if you want to just talk about how your match went. Oh yeah, I can. So uh, it was the New England Chartriots, which is Joe's team, versus the New York Indies, which is Norman Cylon. So Joe brought Dragapult with four kids, four kills and zero deaths, Hitmonchan with two kills and one death, Steelix, zero kills, zero deaths, 
Sylveon, zero kills, one death. Jellicent, zero kills, one death, and he demaxed. Solandit, zero kills, zero deaths. And Norman brought Gengar with zero kills, one death. Araquanid, zero kills, one death. Vanillux, zero kills, one death. Rhydon, three kills, one death. And Rhydon demaxed. Dracovish, zero kills, one death. And Raichu with zero kills, one death. So, uh, tell me what happened, Joe. Alright, well, if anyone's interested, the video is still up <clears throat> either here in, in the Facebook group or also here on the YouTube channel. Because I'm posting Definitely this check out our YouTube channel, though. Def definitely go take a look at our channel. There's lots of good battles from the entirety of our group. So go check those out. Yeah, I'm I'm posting this video to both as well. And um of course you see uh Jagapult kinda cleaned up with four kills. Uh I brought him in towards the end. Hitmonchan. Uh he kinda just got thrown into the battle by accident because uh I had a Steelix lead versus his Gengar. And okay. me and me forgetting that Gengar got Focus Blast and could have potentially used that. <clears throat> I I thought I would get an easy kill with Earthquake instead of setting up rocks. Oh yeah. And uh, his Arachnid came in, red carded me, and then brought in Hitmonchan. Hitmonchan put in some work, took out his Gengar and Vanillix. Then he brought in Rhydon. Did some work with the three kills he got. Jellicent kind of hindered him out of the D max, so he couldn't put in too much damage. And then Dragapult cleaned up at the end. Nice. That's one thing that I do like about this draft, though, is because it's like 80% Pokemon that nobody uses or has used in Gen 7. So, like, you hear things like Hitmonchan put in some work, which you never would have heard then. So, I like that kind of stuff. Yeah, certainly no one would have ever thought to use Blossom if they didn't have to. <laughs> yeah, I, I really wish I could see that match. Alrighty, and then we're going to go on and move over to the Atlanta Arcaniners. Uh, they are at the fourth spot right now solely to a forfeit win versus uh, Jamie, uh, Jay Jamie. Uh, he, they just couldn't get schedules worked out good enough. Uh, Jamie had to take a forfeit. So, automatically, that gives Arcaniders a plus three differential and a win. For now, they did say they were going to go back on this week one and try to get some real stats in. All right. So, the next game is the... Oh, this is my game. So, uh, the Baytown Boomers, uh, David Alonis versus my Toronto, Toronto Tyranitars. Um... Let me pull up the stats. Our game actually came down to a disconnect. Uh, pretty sure he disconnected. And uh, he had a really cool strategy, so it w it was pretty gimmicky. So I don't really think it would have worked twice, and he didn't either. So we gave him the win as opposed to redoing our 20-minute battle because we never could have recreated it. But uh, he brought Como O with one kill, one death. Milotic with one kill, one death. Vikavolt, three kills, zero deaths. Oranguru, zero kill, one death. Rhyperior, Dynamaxed, and got one kill, one death. And Rodom, zero kills, zero death. It was Rodom Frost. Um, my team, I brought Sigilyph with one kill, one death. Hitmontop, Dynamaxed, with one kill, one death. Heliolith, two kills, and one death. Grimmsnarl, zero kills, zero, one death. Hippaldon, zero kills, one death. And Barbacle, zero kills, one death. And uh, the funny thing, I mean, he, he really did have a really cool set. I prepped for uh, his Aegislash and his Torkoal. I thought those were going to be my main threats, and he did not bring either. Um, and he led with a Rodom Frost, which I, I didn't think he was going to bring it, and I wasn't worried about it at all. But he the first move, he tricked. I led uh, Grimmsnarl, and he led Rodom Frost and used to trick, so which scarfed my uh, Rodom, and then he will a wisp the very next turn, so he literally cut the balls off my Grimmsnarl. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but Grimmsnarl didn't die, and then by his stats, it says that Vikavolt was his MVP, but in reality, Vikavolt didn't even hit the field. So it kind of sucks, because whenever the battle ended, it was only he was only up by one Mon, and he did, I, I mean, he did have me running, I would say. He, he had, I mean, he did neuter my Grimmsnarl, 
But it, I mean, it's Pokemon, so literally anything could have happened. So it sucks that we didn't get to see that finish out, but he takes the win on paper. Oh, so you gave him uh, free kills to his Vicavolt? Well, Vicavolt was what he, so, okay, so when it ended, it was his Milotic, and I, he had just KO'd my, I can't even remember the video. I'll be posting the video tonight. It's actually uploading right now, but so y'all can watch it, but, uh, I don't remember what it was, but Milotic was last, and he kept dragon tailing me. So next, he he knocked out something I was going to throw in Heliolisk, and I would have taken his Milotic out. But he, I mean, he had a Rangaroo left after that, Rodon Frost, and then he had, uh, fuck, Rodon Frost, Rangaroo, and uh, Milotic. Vicavolt, that's it, Vicavolt. And, uh, I mean, he just... We we had a I, we 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 went ahead and like decided on it. It wasn't like a he forced it on me or anything like that. It was it was definitely deserved. Like he he probably would have won just because I did not see anything he was doing coming. Um, Milotic Dragon Tail is really annoying, so like it made it impossible for me to set up because uh, it's super bulky. I couldn't take it out because he just kept switching me out. I didn't have a chance to really do anything about it. But yeah, that's it. just that's how it happened. Mm, okay. It happens. You get him it next does week. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I got Michael Bloom next week, so you know I'm coming for that. All right. And uh, next battle, we have Akin versus Joshua. Uh, Akin is the Berlin Bisharps. Oh, wait. Yeah. He's, I feel like his name's Akin. He's the one. <laughs> he, he'll let us know when he sees this video. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to go with Akin for now. And... Uh, he got the win over the Sedona Score Bunnies, one uh, zero. So, and I actually got a description of how the battle went down. So, oh, nice, nice. We'll be able to experience at least through that. So, Berlin Bisharps had Ditto with two kills, no death. A Cloister one kill, one death. Clefairy zero kills, one death. Manectric three kills, one death. Flygon zero kills, one death. And Gudra zero kills, one death. So, technically, Manectric was his MVP, <clears throat> but Ditto was the, the one who evidently won them the game at the end. Uh, Score Bunnies, they had Ferrothorn, 0 kills, 1 death. Inteleon, 1 kill, 1 death. Beware, 1 kill, 1 death. Zatu, 0 kills, 1 death. Drapion with 2 kills, 1 death. And Glade with 1 kill, 1 death. So, a breakdown of how all this came to fruition. <clears throat> So they lead. Uh, Manectric kills Ferrothorn with Flamethrower to start the game off. Then Zatu comes in. Manectric kills that with the Thunderbolt. Then some crazy stuff happens. Sedona Score Bunnies has Drapion in on Flygon and kills it with Poison. So I'm assuming he toxic them. And then uh, after that, Beware kills his Clefairy with Thrash. Then Manectric comes in for Akin, Dynamaxes and kills Beware with Max Lightning. I guess uh, switches that thing out because Gallade Dynamaxes and kills Gudra with Max Knuckle. Ditto comes in, kills Gallade with Psycho Cut. Drapion comes back in, kills Magnectric because I guess he swapped Ditto out knowing the mismatch there. Uh, Cloyster comes in and kills Drapion with Ice Shard. Then Inteleon kills Cloyster with Shadow Ball. And then Ditto comes back and kills Inteleon with its own Shadow Ball. So it seemed like a really oh. good game. Yeah, it sounds like a good game. Aiken's very good. Uh, he made quite a name, I'd say, in the short time he's been here. Oh, yeah. He, he, was, uh, he almost went to the championship round, but Evidently, uh, him and Stewart couldn't get their battle done, so he forfeited the game to Stewart, and that led Stewart to the championship to lose to Jaden. Yeah, because I was I should have been there. <laughs> but... Oh, this was this was uh, the actual draft, not the little tournament we ended up doing. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm sure Akin uh, wants some revenge for that. Yeah, I bet. All right, so next game is the oh, this is the last game. 
Yeah, this is the Minetrix. No, Minetrix. You just did Minetrix. No, I did the, I did the Berlin Bisharps. Oh, my bad. Okay, so this is seven then. You can't. He brought a Minetric, that was the thing. Yeah. All right, so Melbourne Minetrix. Let me pull up his. Whose game is that? Riley versus Steven. Got it. All right. So, Riley and the the Minetrix versus the Magic Harpies. Who is Magic Harpies? Steven. Steven Crocio. All right, so Riley brought Lucario with zero kills, zero deaths. Galarian Weezing with one kill, one death. Driftbloom, zero kills, zero deaths. Rodon Mo with one kill, zero deaths. Tertonitar, one kill, one death. And Excelgore, one kill, one death, died to recoil. So Magic Harpies got Cinderace, zero kills, one death. Copperaja, one kills, one death. Lipard, Dynamaxed, zero kills, one death. Obstagoon, one kills, one death, died to recoil. Rillaboom, zero kills, one death, died to recoil, or, I'm sorry, did not die re to recoil. G Galarian Rapagash, zero kills, one death, and she died to recoil. So, uh, negative four differential for the Magic Harpies. Uh, it looks like Riley didn't Dynamax. No, he didn't. I watched the battle. It was actually a really oh, good battle. Oh, yeah, he posted it. I need to watch that. Uh, he, uh -huh. he did a lot of crazy stuff, and uh, I think... Um, it was Cinderace. He had Excelgore and he knew he couldn't do anything, so he final gambited it, which was smart on his part since Excelgore is a little bit faster than Kinder's. <clears throat> uh, Lightbird Dynamax, but it really didn't do anything at all. I don't, and it was really questioned why he decided to Dynamax that Pokemon out of anything. All right. But, um, this is one of those games you don't see often where. Uh, the Melbourne Manectrix actually dominated the game, but didn't have the differential to show for it because of all the recoil deaths that happened in this game. Yeah. Yeah, Riley's really good. You said that he did some crazy stuff, like elaborate setups and stuff? Not not too elaborate, but like the Excel Gore stuff, uh, I'm surprised Steven didn't see it coming. But knowing how Steven plays, I've played him a couple times. He, yeah. he he pretty much tries to just hit straight forward, doesn't try to predict as much. So, uh, I guess Riley figured that out and took that to a disadvantage. Yeah, I've played Riley before. He's very, very good. Very good. He got player of the week this year. Or, I mean, this week. Oh, nice. Yeah, for the highest jump in the PML ladder that we've had in its one-week birth. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, Riley Taylor, for that. Hopefully we see you skyrocket even further. All right, last game. So that's you. Yeah, that that one goes back to the the previous game we were talking about. So that's the Berlin Bisharps versus Sedona Score Bunnies. So typically on week one, we're not normally going to have teams that lost on the ladder in top eight. But due to the two games that weren't played, uh, specifically the Matt versus Dusty game, the, they're trying to get that one done at a later date. Neither will want to concede right now to sh for stat-wise. So him being the person who lost the, uh, not as badly as the other people, he is up there as number eight on the ladder this week. So what is going to happen with their game then? Uh, Dusty and Matt will play it uh, before this week is over. Uh, they were having timer issues. Both had three Pokemon left. Uh, not able to really determine or agree on who would have won or lost because there was just too much Pokemon left to play. So that that's that for now. We're going to leave it at that. So until they get their game in, we'll see where they stand in week two. Well, the timer issue really sucks. We did not foresee that. Yeah, 20 minutes is not long enough to play a good game, especially with... Uh, those kind of battlers, like Dusty and Matt, they don't necessarily stall, but they do like bulky Pokemon. So, and then now that there's lack of Toxic, that that, that timer is really going to be an issue for battles like that. Yeah, it's like they're trying to eradicate six v six. Well, let's hope uh, they hear uh, Dusty's tweet that he tweeted out to them and. See if they'll give us an update to where they give us back our hour for single battles. 
And give us back our damn versus recorder. <laughs> Please. Now that we can actually record battles easily, we can't record battles. <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. All right, well. That's it from us. Thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, and YouTube channel, and like and comment down below. Uh, and that's it from us. You'll see us next week, next Wednesday. So long, guys. Peace.